What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Recomputer Jetson 10 from Seed Studio. Now in the past we've actually taken a look at a lot of Jetson products on the channel and if you're not familiar with them, this is from NVIDIA and when it comes down to it, these are ARM based development single board computers but you can get by using this as an everyday PC because these ARM chips that NVIDIA has developed do pack a pretty decent punch. And with the Recomputer Jetson 10 from Seed Studio, this comes with everything you need to get up and running. We've got a nice aluminum case, the operating system is pre-installed, and we get our power supply. I've always been a big fan of the Recomputer case from Seed Studio. Basically, this is a universal case for different single board computers, but when it comes to the Jetson 10 version here, we've got the IO backplate for the Jetson Nano, and as you can see here, we've got our power in, full-size display port, full-size HDMI, four USB 3.0 ports, gigabit Ethernet, and micro USB for development. This comes pre-installed with the Jetson Nano. We've also got the operating system ready to go, so this is a plug-and-play unit. You'll just need to do a little bit of configuration once you set this up. The top can be removed very easily. It's connected with these four magnets, so we can easily access the Jetson Nano and get to the GPIO, camera connectors, and everything else we need to on this little board. We've got a pretty decent little setup here. It's got a 128-core Maxwell GPU, a quad-core A57 ARM CPU running it up to 1.43 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, micro SD card slot, gigabit Ethernet. We also have an M.2 key E slot on the board itself, so we can easily add Wi Fi 6 or AC Wi Fi, HDMI, and display port. As you saw, we've got four USB 3.0 ports, and we've got that micro USB port. Now, this can actually be powered by the micro USB, but you can only run it at 5 watts. We definitely want to get as much out of this as possible, so I'm going to show you exactly what to do once we get in here. But this runs Ubuntu, and like I mentioned, it's already pre-installed, ready to go. Upon the initial boot, you'll just have to create a name and password. It takes about three minutes to get everything set up, but you're going to be brought right to the desktop. Uh, here's NeoFetch. As you can see, we're on Ubuntu 18.04, and there are ways to upgrade this, but NVIDIA doesn't officially support it. I've tested it on older nanos, and it does work out really well. 1.4 gigahertz on the CPU, four cores. And uh, if you did want to run this at 5 watts, right up here, little NVIDIA control panel, power mode, we're in max N. So this is going to run at about 15 watts. You can change it to 5 watts, but it's going to significantly lower the performance of this board. I would definitely keep it on max N as long as you've got wall power, but if you needed to run this on a battery for some reason, 5 watts would definitely get you by. I've got the resolution of everything set to 1080p right now, but it will go up to 4K. You can take it down as low as 720p, maybe a little lower if you've got a different screen that you want to use it with. Like I mentioned, this is really geared towards developers, and there are a few demos here. We've got the VP1 demos built in, and there are a lot more we can download from the NVIDIA website. This is a remap demo, and we've got four streams running at the exact same time, and they're all being remapped in real time. If we had four cameras connected to this unit, we could do the exact same thing in real time there also. So we're working on CUDA cores right now in the GPU with four video streams. We can go to CPU, but you'll see this is uh, not as good as CUDA when it comes to, you know, remapping these videos. We've got another one here. This is the stereo demo. We've got two streams using CUDA. And with this, if I try to switch it to PVA, it's just not going to do anything. It actually times out on me. But yeah, all of this is running in real time. And like I mentioned, there are other demos over on the website you can download. But you know, when it comes down to it, if you're already into robotics or ARM development, you probably already know about this board and have one in your inventory. It's an awesome tool for low cost AI development, but there are a lot of people out there that just won't be into, you know, the development side of things. And I really want to check out how this thing performs kind of as an everyday desktop. The software center does come pre-installed. And if you want to download a few things, you can always go through here. I've already installed a bunch of stuff that I wanted to test out, but really, um, one of the main things is, you know, web browsing, video playback, and I'd say cloud gaming on something like this. When it comes to these ARM chips, yes, there are a lot of low-end games like Extreme Tux Racer that's going to run on this. We can use the OpenGL back in, and this also supports Vulkan. The game itself doesn't, but OpenGL works great on this board. We'll go ahead and open up Chrome. So Chromium comes pre-installed. You can do Firefox if you want to. And uh, let's check out NVIDIA's website. We'll just go to 
artificial intelligence. I'm on Ethernet because unfortunately this doesn't come pre-installed with Wi-Fi. You can always use an M.2 Wi-Fi card or USB. It's really up to you. It's not bad at all for web browsing. I'll just load up one more page here. I'll do a quick search for Jetson Nano and see what pops up. Email checking, web browsing, little things like that. It's going to work out just fine for you. I mean, everything loads up really quickly, especially given that we're over gigabit Ethernet right now. It's got plenty of power for that using the Chromium web browser. But what about video playback? Well, when it comes to playing back video in Chrome, uh, your best bet is to block 60 FPS. Unfortunately, not much development has been done in getting video playback through a browser working well on this device. 4K30 is what this little chip is rated at, and if you want to run it from an external drive or an internal drive, it'll work. But when you're streaming, it's really not that great. And I was hoping for, you know, a big improvement in video playback or video streaming since the release. But we're still using Ubuntu 18 here, and not much has been done. I've also tested out Firefox, getting about the same frame rates, even with uh, 30 FPS video. Another thing I was actually really interested in with this was cloud gaming, and I'm going to go with xCloud or Xbox Game Streaming. It's the Game Pass Game Streaming deal. I'm not exactly sure what they're calling it now, but it did detect the controller as soon as I hit the button. We're over Ethernet, and we'll jump into some Forza Horizon 5. And so far, so good. It's actually working much better than I thought it would using the Chromium browser here. Input latency isn't too bad. It seems to be a little more than if I was using an Android device. And I kind of wasn't expecting this given that we're over Ethernet and not Wi-Fi. But yeah, Xbox game streaming, Game Pass streaming, whatever you call it, does work on this little board. Another thing that might be helping a little bit is having the controller plugged in through USB. I don't have Bluetooth on this unit just yet, so I did have to use a wired connection. And of course, I wanted to take a look at some emulation, but in the past, I've done several videos using the Nano and emulation, and one of my favorite operating systems to use is the Ares project. It's basically RetroPie or Botocera for the Nano. You can head over to Tech Toy Tinker's website, I'll leave a link in the description, flash it to an SD card, and get set up really easily. First thing I wanted to show off here was some Dreamcast emulation, and with this we're using RetroArch with the Flycast Core, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I've had really good luck with Dreamcast when it comes to the Jetson Nano. FPS is up in the top right hand corner, and it's going to run this at full speed, no problem at all. Moving over to a little bit of Sega Saturn, RetroArch using the Yobasi and Shiro core. There's a lot of stuff that's going to run at full speed. I do notice a few graphical glitches here and there, but overall, it's really great performance out of this little thing, especially when it comes to Sega Saturn on ARM. And finally, a little bit of PSP emulation. And finally, a little bit of PSP emulation. I always had better luck with the OpenGL backend on this board, so that's what we have here. 2x resolution, and as you can see, it's running fine. It'll even do the harder to emulate stuff, but it needs to be at 1x. So yeah, I think Seed Studio has put a great little package together if you want to get up and running really quickly with the Jetson Nano. Really love the re-computer case here. Operating system comes pre-installed. I mean, you're good to go. It's plug and play. The only thing you need to set up is your name and password, and you'll be up and running with the Jetson Nano in no time. But if you're not looking for all of the bells and whistles right out of the box, you can always set one of these up yourself. You can just pick up the Jetson Nano all by itself. If you've got a micro SD card laying around, just head over to NVIDIA's website, download the Jetpack software, flash it to the card, and you can get set up from there. I mean, it's really up to you. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I will have at least one more video coming up with this kit. I have found a way to get Android installed on this, and uh, it does take a little bit of work, but it's something I've been interested in for a long time, so I definitely want to show that off. If you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button, maybe turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But if you're interested in learning more about the ReComputer Jetson 10, I will leave some links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.